Welcome back to another episode featuring the ongoing saga between Judge Slavin and a notorious First Amendment auditor who seems to make a recurring appearance in our courtroom. This defendant, often labeled as a frauditor, has a knack for representing himself, claiming sovereign citizen status, and challenging the court's jurisdiction. In today's case update, we revisit this familiar face as the defendant returns, causing a deja vu moment for Judge Slavin and our court. Known for contentious interactions with law enforcement officers under questionable circumstances, this man is no stranger to legal proceedings. However, it seems that Judge Slavin has reached his wit's end with this repeat offender. Will this update bring a new turn of events for the defendant? Or will Judge Slavin finally put an end to this recurrent courtroom drama? Stay tuned to find out how this latest encounter unfolds and whether the judge's patience prevails or reaches its breaking point. Hi, Ms. Uh, Manorino, Ms. Romanto. Today is the date and time set for a settlement conference, giving you the two of you the opportunity to discuss the matter. If you guys work out any kind of resolution, that's fine. Uh, if not, we're just going to proceed to to trial. So, Ms. Manorino, was there any resolution today? No, Your Honor. All right. And Mr. Lanto, you'll be receiving uh, your notification for the uh, trial date. Well, objection. I, I just want to make sure uh, last time I was here, we discussed the issue of jurisdiction. You gave me a charging document. And on that charging document, if I if I had you in federal court on, on a stand in federal court and I asked you to highlight the word jurisdiction, what would you highlight? So you'll be getting the you'll be getting the notice for the hearing uh, for the trial date in the mail. Have a good day. Okay, well, I, Thank you, Your Honor. I, All right, so let's uh, get back to what I was doing. Case 230877OM, People versus Lanto. Mr. Greco, you already placed your appearance. Sir, your name for the record, please. Joshua Lanto. All right. So today's the date and time set for an arraignment and pretrial in this matter. First off, as to the arraignment, sir, you do have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can and will be used against you. At trial. You have the right to an attorney. If you cannot afford an attorney, one would be appointed to you by the court of public expense. Do you understand those rights? I understand the rights that you just told me. All right. Sir, are you choosing? I, I do have my court appointed attorney here. Um, are you choosing to represent yourself today? I am choosing to speak for myself. Well, let's just court. represent yeah, yeah. speak. I, I mean, in legally. So tomato, tomato. Yeah, yeah so. no, no, you can't represent. <clears throat> no, just like at, so. at any point, if you do wish to have a court appointed attorney, please let the court know so that I can effectuate that uh, that right in your wishes with regard to it. I appreciate right. that. Now, with regard to the alleged uh, charges in this matter, it is alleged that with regard to the arraignment, would, do you wish me to uh, read the complaint or would you like to waive the formal reading? Uh, if you'd like to read it into the record, I'd appreciate that. Sure. Okay. All right. <laughs> it is alleged. <clears throat> It is alleged that on uh, November 17th of 2022, that you, in count one, that you violated city ordinance 32-31, commonly known as interfering with the police uh, authority. That's a misdemeanor punishable by 93 days in jail and or up to $500 in fines. In count two, it is alleged that you violated city ordinance 32-31, interfering with a police authority. Again, that's a misdemeanor punishable by 93 days in jail and or up to $500 in fine. In count three, it is alleged that you violated city ordinance 32-31, commonly known as interfering with police authority. And again, that's a misdemeanor punishable by 93 days in jail and or up to $500 in fines. <clears throat> As to those charges, how do you plead? Uh, well, I'm not gonna, I'm not prepared to make a plea at this uh, time. And I'll recognize you as standing mute and I'll enter a plea of not guilty on your behalf. Well, if I, if I could just object to that for just a moment. Um, because you did say, which is why I was trying to recall the matter of City versus Taylor versus Joshua Lanto in the previous case, because you said in that in that arraignment that I have the right to be informed of the cause and nature of the charges, correct? Mm -hmm. Okay, so obviously that case did got you get a copy of the complaint. 
Are you uh, talking about in this matter? No, no, no. I, I haven't seen anything. I, and I, okay. As a matter of fact, I've requested sure, well, discovery from and, the House Council several times, and they have not given it to me. This case hasn't even started yet. This case is just been right. So the, the case is that the arraignment stage. Right? Yeah. So the case that I wanted to recall because I had the right to be informed of the cause and nature of the charges in that case, but it's clear but that's that, not the case that's on my docket. But that's why I wanted to recall that case because this stems from the same incident. So it's almost Are like saying recall is a. Because there's two different meanings of the word recall. Recall is to remember, or recall is to actually call that case. I would actually like to call that case because it was dismissed then, without prejudice, and I wanted to be dismissed with prejudice. And I made it clear to House Counsel that I had to, I had expenses when it came to that case. Okay. I think it's only fair. To, so, just from a procedural standpoint, it's uh -huh. not on the docket today. Due and timely notice wasn't given to the court nor to Mr. Greco about your desire to do anything with that case. So you need to motion that up for a motion. But we are on record, right? But we are on the record. And, okay. I, and let the record reflect that I'm telling you that procedurally you need to, if you have anything you want to do with some other case that isn't the case that's set for this docket today, yeah. file a motion, file it with whoever you're going to serve, serve obviously the other side, serve a copy on the court. The court will set it for a motion date. Yeah, I appreciate then that. That case will be brought and then everybody will be knowingly and voluntarily present present and they will be given all the notice ahead of time of what what it is you want to do okay well i appreciate that because and that actually speaks to the arraignment that we're doing here this is right a now. different this is a different situation the arraignment today is just simply i'm telling you what your charges are i'm telling yeah. you what your constitutional rights are with regard to an arraignment then i'm asking either for how do you plead you can either plead guilty not guilty or you cannot answer that question, and in which case the court will will automatically enter a non a stand, recognize you as standing mute and enter a plea of not guilty on your behalf, so that it preserves your not guilty status and it preserves your constitutional rights. And one of those constitutional rights that you've explained to me is that I have the right to be informed of the cause and nature of charges. And my point that's to bring correct, up, and that's why I just told you that you were the count one is alleged that you violated city ordinance thirty two dash thirty one commonly known with interfering with police authority. Now, if you'd like me to read the expanded complaint, I can read the expanded complaint to you. Well, can I, may I just speak without being interrupted for a minute? I, I, first off, I'm not interrupting you. Second, I'm just making sure that things are procedurally done correct. Third, I'm gonna get, again, advise you that anything you say can and will be used against you. You do have a right to remain silent. I understand. So if you choose to, you choose to say anything. Well, the reason, the reason I'm asking questions about the cause and the nature of the charges is because on the last case that got dismissed, it was clear. You got to stop referencing the last case because that's a separate case. Whatever happened with we that case. We have the case, same thing going on in this case. case. We have a, we have a similar situation in this case, whereas I don't know if the prosecutor understands the cause and the nature of the charges because he had to dismiss the last case. Yeah. Right. Well, so how, I'm, how I'm is, about to so, let, then then let me read the complaint to you. Okay. Let me make sure you get a copy of the complaint. Right. And I saw your YouTube uh, channel on, you, or well, I saw your video on YouTube. First you off, explained. it's not my YouTube channel. It's well, something that's forced upon yeah. me that I'm required to do because <laughs> right. there's a court order signed by my chief judge. I, I prefer to do all my cases in person, but I'm required to broadcast them live because. Well, I certainly appreciate any, any government entity willing to use transparency to put oh, the I'm, truth on the table. 100% I'm in favor for it. I don't have anything to hide. I didn't uh, I don't do anything wrong. I didn't get, I don't have you any. You did explain factual evidence of jurisdiction, though. And you did explain it for about the better part of a half hour to a guy. The last time I was on because Zoom, I was told I was crazy for talking like that. You didn't understand me. So. Right. But I was told I was talking crazy for asking for it. No, not at all. Okay, so I'm not crazy. Okay, that's that's yeah, you can, for me. You can always you can always challenge jurisdiction. Jurisdiction is something you can even challenge for the first time on appeal. One of the only things you can challenge for the first time on appeal. Well, luckily so we have about 160 people watching us right now that have heard that for the first time that but, probably don't understand that. I get it. A lot of people watch a couple of things on YouTube or a couple of things on Google. And they think they, they think they become a legal scholar. Well, let's be honest. They watch Law and Order, and then they think they're experts on the law. I can't watch Law and Order. <laughs> Me neither. I should, it's actually uh, painful to watch that sort of stuff. It's entertainment. That's exactly. It is. It's meant for entertainment. It's not right. 
Last on, on the last case that was here, though, I, I just have a few other clarifications. But then again, I'm not going to discuss on the record any other cases that are no longer. No, no, no. This, this isn't in regards to another case. This is in regards to my case and what happened in this <laughs> case right here. Yeah, in this case, right? Yeah. Well, again, before you start discussing the facts of this case, I am going to caution you that you have the right Fifth to sign yeah. it. And, and I don't, I don't sign anything, so I'm just. But that's a copy of the. That's a copy of the. Oh, the okay. okay, appreciate that. Uh, and now is there... So now I'm going to read into the record what the allegations are. Okay. All right. So it is alleged that on November the 17th, 2022, that you violated city ordinance chapter 32, article uh, 2, section 32-31, interfering with police authority, which states... It shall be unlawful for any person within the city to resist any police officer, any member of the police department, or any person duly empowered with police authority while in the discharge or apparent discharge of their police authority duty, or in any way to interfere with or hinder the police officer or member of the police department in the discharge of the police authority duty. And it is just a quick objection, just a point of clarification. There's no objection to that because that's just the that's, that is the ordinance. Okay, literally, if you're just reading it into the record, record, I understand. I that. the ordinance. That's yeah, I just want to know what in any way in the in this chart. What again, does it in any way? Mean? Again, I can't answer that question because for me to answer that question would be give me giving you legal advice. If you want to file a motion, you can more than welcome to file a motion. Yeah, because in any way it's awfully vague and it seems obtuse and it seems like it's just the These are all great to... things that one somebody might want to argue in a motion. Yeah, it seems just... impossible to determine what in any so, way. So, but if you but if you could, please don't interrupt me until I get down to the bottom here because I'm gonna, I want to let you know exactly what the allegations are against you from a factual basis. The reason the reasons that the uh, warrant was signed because I, they, I found that there was probable cause that a crime was committed and probable cause that you were the one who committed the crime. Hence why the warrant was placed into existence in the first place. It is alleged that on the above listed date, which was the 11 17 of 22, at approximately 2 50 p.m., uh, you, the defendant, Mr. Lanto, engaged in a repeated course of conduct to interfere with Officer Andrew Borg's discharge of his authorized duties, which include traffic enforcement on South Telegraph Road near E Course Road in the city of Tampa. Uh, you, Mr. Lanto, uh, allegedly had unlawful uh, actions, including following Officer Borg on multiple traffic stops, approaching the traffic stops in the close proximity to Officer Borg in his vehicle and the drivers, uh, yelling obscenities and insults at Officer Borg, and video recording Officer Borg while inside of his patrol vehicle while he was accessing, accessing uh, protected lean information concerning the, the drivers that were pulled over. It's also alleged, Mr. Lanto, you were ultimately arrested uh, after Officer David Jones witnessed you walking within close proximity to Officer Borg's vehicle during a traffic stop and attempting to video record Officer Borg while he was inside his patrol vehicle accessing lean information about the driver. In count one, specifically, more specifically, in count one, the violation of section 32-31, interfering with the police authority, you, Mr. Lanto, the defendant, <clears throat> allegedly approached the traffic stop at approximately 3.04 p.m. and interfered with Officer Borg by being in close proximity to Officer Borg, his patrol vehicle, and the pulled over um, driver <clears throat> in the center median of Telegraph Road and yelling and uh, hurling insults and obscenities while Officer Borg was discharging his police authority duty. In count two, violation of section 32-31, interfering with police authority, you, the defendant, Mr. Ranto, allegedly approached the traffic stop at approximately 3.12 p.m. and interfered with Officer Borg by being in close proximity to Officer Borg, his patrol vehicle, uh, his patrol car, and the, and the pulled over driver, uh, the parking lot of the Tropical Smoothie Cafe and yelling and hurling insults and obscenities while Officer Borg was discharging his police authority duty. In count three, it is alleged a violation of section 32-31 interfering with the police officer and that you, the defendant, Mr. Lanto, allegedly approached the traffic stop at approximately 3.31 PM and interfered with Officer Borg by yelling by strike that by being in close proximity to Officer Borg, his patrol car, and the pulled over driver in a parking lot on South Telegraph Road and attempting to video record Officer Borg while he was inside of his patrol vehicle, accessing lean information about the driver and otherwise discharging 
is police authority. Again, those are misdemeanors punishable by 93 days in jail and up to $500 in fines. Those are the factual basis which gave, which gave rise to probable cause to execute this, this warrant and now is being charged against you. Again, you have the right to remain silent. Again, you do have the right to have counsel at any given time. You're choosing today as to those charges and the allegations, how do you plead? Guilty, not guilty, or you stand mute? Well, I have to have I have to make a few clarifications before I make an informed. This isn't a matter of clarifications. This is you either pleading guilty, not guilty, or standing mute. Well, I was told I have the right to be informed of the cause and the nature of the charge. You, you just read this into the record, and all I did was confuse. I did. So, because we have right in here that Officer Bo or I was told Listen, I was I'm in close the, proximity. Of sure. I'm not so going to get into the particulars. Listen, I'm not going to get into the picture. This isn't the trial. This is nobody's sworn in under oath. Uh, there's a, a subject to cross examination by both sides. Cool. That's what that's what trials are for. Okay. That's before, what trials are for. Before I make this is informed. just this is just these things. So I'm going to give you I'm going to give you five seconds to either choose guilty, not guilty, or just don't say anything. Or if you're not responsive, then I'll just enter a plea of not guilty, so that your not guilty status is preserved and your constitutional rights preserved there as well. Well, so how do you plead? Guilty, not guilty? I object for, for clarification. Sure. Guilty or not guilty? Well, I object to that because I can't make an informed plea. All right. Then then I'm going to enter a plea of not guilty on your behalf. So you're still not guilty on your behalf? And they have the right well, to and then just let the record show I do not want a plea being made for me. Just, you understand why I have there's to say no, that on the There's no choice in that. I have to, I'm procedurally required to move forward by doing one of the three. So. Well, I was told in, when it pertains to this case at the last proceeding that was here, and I don't know who you had stand in for you. Um, I don't pick. As I, it was bald my guy, father, my it looked like a mob away. boss. Don't know. My father passed away. I had to not be here. So. Yeah, and well, and he ordered me in here in person, said he was going to have somebody watch over me, which sounded like a failed don't know. So again, I wasn't here. I wasn't presiding over that case at the time. Well, so I, if it's true that he did that. Would you perceive that as a veiled threat? I'm not going to answer that question, sir, because it's not the time or yeah. the place for it. No others have been given any due time well, this, of anybody, and nobody's been advised in the premises of any of that information. So, um, again, well, I have the one, video if you'd like to watch it. Not, you not, ordered again, me in person. Today's the date and time set for an arraignment. Yeah. Today's the date and time set for the arraignment. Well, I'm just saying that's all we're doing today is the arraignment. And I also have it's also set for a pretrial. So you have the opportunity to speak now that you've been advised in the premises of what you've been charged with. I've entered a plea of not guilty for you. Would you like to speak with Mr. Greco about any potential resolution? There were a few key things. Would that you like said. to speak with Mr. Greco about any potential resolution? Well, can I just make a clarification on the record? There's, I don't know what more you're going to clarify. Today's purpose of today is for me to inform you of what you've been charged with. I, understand. I have done that. I understand. And now but when I you have, have other that, cases that I need to get to, that, that's why this is why cases are scheduled in certain ways. And with well, I'd be happy to be the stuff. last case called today, so we so, can so we can that? properly, you know, clarify a couple of things. I'd be happy to be the last case called, so we can properly clarify a few things. Well, first off, there's nothing to clarify. I've told but you there are, I'm in charge. Of, there's not. So I'm going to ask you right now to be to talk with Mr. Greco and have a pretrial discussion with him. You're more than welcome to do that. Could I just <laughs> tell you what was said on the record? Your Honor, in the last case, in regards in regards to this case, in regards to this case, because this the, is the first time the, I've seen the, the judge said on the record that he was powerless to to make Mr. Greco provide anything regarding factual evidence jurisdiction until the until the arraignment kicks in. Yes, they're not going to be because the case doesn't start until it's actually you've been told what you're being charged with. Right, because he said he can't make him produce the factual evidence jurisdiction. <clears throat> That's what the judge said in the last. Well, I, I wasn't there and I wasn't the judge. What I'm telling you is this: I have told you exactly what you're being charged with. There is an order in here for discovery. If you want an order for discovery, if you want uh, to get a chance to have discovery, absolutely. And if there's anything that's uh, that's out there um, discoverable, then you may have every right to, to go and get it to, in preparation for trial. Well, let's do but that. That's let's not today. Because that's I, not I, have today. A feeling, I, I have a feeling I need to inform you of a few things that pertain to the York ah. Police Department here. And I, I well, actually... First off, first off I, this, if, you're, if it has to do with the case, I can't take in anything from outside of the case. There's a reason that hearsay is not part of cases. Why? Because they're literally, by definition, an out-of-court statement being used to prove the truth of the matter asserted under uh, Rule of Evidence 801. Well, you've That's got literally the definition. Lying, so, if you're, you're gotta, I, yeah. so if you're telling me stuff right now, one, you're not under oath, so I can care less. 
Two, this isn't the trial. Would you like to put me under oath? No, I want to. I want to set this up for. If you want a trial, we'll give you a trial. That's that's what I mean, I'm saying. If you want to see what happened? And again, all of that would be done at a trial. If you're going to bring in evidence, it has to have foundations. Foundation. You have to lay a foundation for every piece of evidence. Well, then evidence okay. doesn't evidence doesn't just come in. It has to be factually accurate and it has to be reliable. Okay, so they're not both. That's how you lay a foundation for evidence. I have a scale in my garage. Every time I get on it, it says oh, I weigh 187 pounds. I love that scale. <laughs> it's very reliable. Every time, 187. <laughs> Guess what? The scale's not accurate. It's reliable, but it's not accurate. All evidence has to, and that's what we do at trial. Today is just the day when I'm telling you this is what you're facing. This is what they are alleging that you did. And if you'd like to set it for a trial, you can do so. If you'd like to have the, the assistance of an attorney, I'll make sure you have an attorney present with you. Even right. if you even if you just want them riding yeah, shot, even if you just want them riding shotgun with you. So you can ask questions about the rules of evidence and things like that. I'm not sure what you're I don't know if you have well, a Well, that's the only doctor. reason I would ask for I don't know if you have a juris doctorate. I don't know what you know. I don't know what you studied. And I'm just telling you that's why you have a right to assistance of counsel. Yeah. If you'd like it at any time from now until the trial. For administrative I'll purposes still... only, but I will speak for myself in the court of law. I do not want anybody speaking for me. Sure. And they did that for me up in Pontiac. They gave me standby counsel. Again, you're talking about some kind of case that I have nothing to do with. I, I, I'm just wondering. And, 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 and trust down me, here trust me, me I don't, don't need, I trust me, me. while I appreciate it, I don't need any examples because I teach all this stuff. I know exactly yeah. every example. So, and, and I'm pretty sure you know so, what Houston Versailles says about police interference. So, again, if you want an attorney, I'm going to let you have an attorney. If you well, don't want an attorney and you want to speak for yourself and represent yourself, you have a God given constitutional yeah, right to represent yourself. Houston Versailles says that a so, police interference listen, is physical. I, I, I'm not going to get into a yeah. civil procedure class here. All I right. have other well. cases to do. You've been advised in the premises of what the charges are against you. Uh -huh. I'm finding you you're unresponsive as to guilty or not guilty, so I am going to put in a plea of not guilty. And I have now. to object to that on the record. Sure, it's on the okay. record. Thank you. And um, now, if you don't want to speak with Mr. Pry with uh, Mr. Greco uh, at this time, then you're more than welcome to to leave, and you'll be given a, a, a notice as to as to moving forward. I can set this up for a settlement yeah. conference, or we can just set it directly for a trial. Okay, and then the next time we're here, we'll be able to recall the matter, the old matter, so I can get reimbursed. I can't answer that or... question because that may be me giving you legal advice. Okay. When I'm wearing I this robe, Mr. Drucker should when be I'm wearing this robe yeah. it's like being a referee. I can throw a flag, blow a whistle, but I can't coach either team. Yeah. I can't tell you how to proceed or where in what manner you should proceed. Well, you spent about a half hour explaining it to somebody else. No, I explained um, to them. Well, it was it was a formal was. motion. I yeah, wasn't he... giving I wasn't giving them legal advice. I yeah. was merely explaining what jurisdiction means. They had already right. said in their motion they had they had filed a motion. Right. Setting each uh, yeah. individual no, I, I reason. Watched it. Yeah, I watched it. I, I pay attention. I'm sure. I'm actually here to, to look for areas we can find agreement. Say again, I'm sorry. I'm actually here to look for areas we can find agreement. Oh well then that's someone that's someone you need to talk to Mr. Greco about. Well he's I don't think he's willing to find agreement. Well, the, the, <laughs> oh, you're not gonna find with, so me, going to have me, to with me, agreement comes from because the two parties approach me with an agreeable situation that they want to put on the record. In the in form of a, of a plea or a dismissal, or I can do a trial and I let the facts that are all under oath speak for themselves. Well, and when I saw the mob boss judge, he actually had a different case, and he was actually a lot more fair than I originally gave him credit for. So the mob boss judge, I'm glad he's not here, but he's not the one sure that he, he's the one that told me I would be assigned an army. Well, first off, I don't, I don't, I don't find any, I find, I find it disrespectful to refer to somebody as a mob boss. That's the, because that literally. Is, that's how it felt to me. That's what, well. What I'm saying is, you just liable somebody. Well, that's how it felt. Because now you put him in what's known as false light, and I'm just telling you, I wouldn't do that. Well, I for appreciate civil, the for civil reasons alone. I, wouldn't do that. I appreciate the one. But and I'm not going to allow any sort of disrespect uh, to any of the judiciary, especially when I didn't want to over it, especially because the judicial tenure commission have sanctioned the action. Then sure, I have no problem with making commentary about it. I, well, until, I don't until, until that's been done. Um, there's no, there's no need for doing that. Yeah, and I, trust me, you're not going to garner any favor, nor are you going to, you're going to do anything but lose the respect of my, of me, if you're just going to throw like petty comments and like that. I prefer people who just let the facts speak for themselves and let the law speak for them, and they just keep it professional. Okay, well, as long as we're just here to put facts on the table, I can do that. Sure, then you've been advised, and uh, so you are either free to go or free to talk to Mr. Greco for All right, uh, I mean, if you want to talk to me, we can talk. All right, Mr. I, I can always. Uh, Thank you.
you can sign back in or Mr. Greco, are you available to talk any further today on this case? Uh, Your Honor, Mr. Lanto and I have spoken and it's either going to be set for a settlement conference and we can provide him some of the discovery information with the order or a trial. That okay, so I was, have to talk about I was, anymore. So I, I was getting the discovery regardless. I, 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 you haven't asked for discovery, but one of I asked Mr. Greco in the. Yeah, he's going to get it regardless. It's just what, what is set for it. So, right. so what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this for a settlement conference. You'll be given the date in the mail from when that settlement conference is. Mr. Greco, if there's any uh, discoverables, uh, type discovery, make sure you send that to Mr. Lanto. Mr. Lanto, did you provide Mr. Greco with an email and a phone number? Or, uh, he's, and, he's or got my email. email. He's got my email. And then just to make sure the record accurately reflects what the request was from Mr. Greco, I did request number one, the factual evidence of jurisdiction and what he's using as a charging instrument to, uh, to prove. I gave you a copy of the charging instrument, the warrant. Yeah. But it, but it does it does nothing to explain jurisdiction. You you went over it for a half hour with somebody else. That's not on you. That's that's right. I'm gonna provide you, Mr. Lanto with the discovery we have. I'm gonna move sure. on to the next case. All right. So okay. you'll be getting the date in the mail of when that is. And if there's any issues uh, as far as discovery or anything else, that's why the court rules provide for motion motion uh Proceed. Yeah, because at this time, on the record, I, I'm not voluntarily surrendering jurisdiction. Du Fair. Du duly noted. Fair. Okay. Thank you. Noted. All right. All right. Have a good Have rest your day. day. Have a good rest of your day, sir. Thank you. Yeah. All comments, viewpoints, interpretations, and insights expressed in this video are for education and entertainment purposes. All individuals featured in the video are to be presumed innocent until proven guilty in a court of law. Please do not attempt to contact, locate, or engage with any individuals featured in the video.